faster than an auctioneer at an estate sale. In chunks no bigger than fun size Halloween candy. Smarter, safer, healthier, and as short a time as possible. This is Quick Tips, the late night edition. Sexuality education, fast. I'm Galena Mines, and welcome to our show. Got a tweet from a not-so-smooth talker. I followed up with him, and he says he and his girlfriend argue all the time, and he can't get her to understand. We've all been there. The key to a healthy, happy relationship, whether it is sexual or not, is understanding. And the key to understanding is communication. If we can't communicate effectively with other people, then they won't understand us. And all sorts of problems can occur, including misunderstandings and arguments. You might think communication is pretty easy. You say something, people listen and understand it, and you move on. But communication is rarely that simple. People don't always say exactly what they mean, and sometimes they say nothing at all, and we have to figure out what they mean from their actions. In today's episode, to answer not-so-smooth talker's question, we'll discuss the way we communicate. That is, we will answer the question, how are words and actions used to communicate our goals and desires? When we think about communication, we probably first think of using words. That is, we communicate by telling people something, either out loud, on paper, or through electronic messages like NS Talker's tweet. These types of communication that use words are often called verbal communications. However, we also communicate non-verbally. That is, we use our actions and body language to communicate with people. Sometimes people say more with their body language and actions than they do with words. In addition to communicating verbally and non-verbally, that is, with our words and with our bodies, we also communicate directly and indirectly. We communicate directly when we say or do something that expresses exactly what we want or feel. We communicate indirectly when we say or do something related to what we want or feel, but not exactly what we want. Direct communication is usually more effective because there is less room for misunderstanding when we are saying and doing exactly what we want to get across to the other person. Indirect communication often leaves a lot of room for misunderstandings and misinterpretation. I refer to these four approaches as diving in, because the term diving in helps me remember D-I-V-N, which stands for direct, indirect, verbal, nonverbal. So let's dive in with an example. Imagine you are working at a construction site, and you want visitors to the site to wear a hard hat to protect their heads. What can you do? A direct verbal approach is to tell the visitor, you need to wear a hard hat to enter this area. An indirect verbal approach is to tell the visitor that it might be hazardous in this area. Are you safe? Notice how the direct approach specifically states what you want the visitor to do, while the indirect one only suggests it, which is likely to be more effective. Remember, you can also communicate non-verbally. A non-verbal direct approach would be to actually pull helmets out and place them on visitors' heads before they enter the construction zone. Finally, a nonverbal indirect approach would be to leave helmets on a table by the entrance to the construction zone. Of course, the best approach is to combine all of these. Tell people they need to use a helmet and put a sign up that reminds them. Tell them that it may be hazardous. Put helmets by the entrance and place helmets on the heads of visitors who forget to do it themselves. Can you imagine how these four approaches might be used in relationships? I can definitely communicate directly and indirectly, verbally and non-verbally, about abstinence and about safer sex. In general, direct verbal communication is better than indirect verbal communication because it leaves less room for misunderstanding. Direct non-verbal communication is generally better than indirect non-verbal communication, again, because there is less room for miscommunication. The best approach is to use both direct verbal and direct nonverbal approaches and to make sure your indirect verbal and indirect nonverbal messages match your direct messages. That is, say and do what you mean and mean what you say and do. And thus, the answer to N.S. Talker's question. Effective communication involves your mouth and your body, your words and your actions. You communicate verbally and non-verbally, directly and indirectly. 
You have to pay close attention to all four of these when you are trying to communicate your goals and feelings. And you have to pay even more attention to them when you're trying to understand someone else. Remember, other people do not always communicate directly. And when they don't, it's up to you to clarify. Otherwise, misunderstandings, arguments, and other bad things can happen in your relationships. That's it for this segment of Quick Zips, the late night edition. Remember, use your words and actions wisely. Be safe. See you next time. This episode of Quick Zips is brought to you by Cupid's Little Helper, who would like to remind you that a key to happy, healthy relationships is clear, effective communications. Um, yeah, like, um, I mean, you need to make sure, uh, people understand what you are, um, saying. Yeah, um... I mean, want, because if they don't, then bad things happen, like fights. Yeah, bad things. So say stuff clear, you know, communicate, yeah, and also do other things, too. Well, that was certainly some poor communication. What our friend means to say is, say what you mean and mean what you say.